gee, I don't know. I don't remember. It was a million years ago. You're asking me questions and it was a million years ago. Gee, I'm going to have to look at my pictures. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. So today, this case we're starting today has got it all. Possible police cover-up of a murder. Uh, a crazy face. A crazy picture lady. Eyes where you can see Satan himself. We're going west. We got palm trees. We got outrageous murder rates. Blonde hair. The sunset strip. Everyone's chasing a dream but living a nightmare. Stick with me, kid, and you'll be a star. Los Angeles, California. It's the 80s, 1986. And at this time, the murder, the homicide detectives in LA were just stretched really thin. And they had a lot on their plates. And so a murder comes in in 86 of a woman named Sherry Rasmussen. And she was found by her husband. And her face had been beaten and disfigured. She had a bite mark on her arm. There's blood all over the walls and the carpet. And it's just a nightmare scene. And the homicide detectives that, are, that pick it up in 86 are, they go with a burglary gone bad. That's the theory that they go with. And this is supported by a burglary that happened across the street the same night. And there's witnesses for the burglary of like two suspects are seen. And a sketch artist drew up these two suspects. And then so those two suspects become the suspects in this murder of Sherry Rasmussen. And Sherry Rasmussen is just a beautiful young nurse that worked at a hospital, loved helping people, loved her family, was already moving like way up the ranks in, her ho in the hospital that she worked in, and just really off to a great start in life. She marries this very successful guy named John Rutten, and it seems like her life is just going pretty well. And the one kind of thing that was going in her life not well was her husband, John's, one of his ex-girlfriends, crazy-eyed Stephanie Lazarus, was having a really hard time letting go of John, the husband. And... John and Stephanie had dated in college, and then they had kind of dated other people, and it just, Stephanie, crazy face, she just couldn't let, her, let him go. And she started kind of harassing Sherry Rasmussen, the victim. And there's a story where, and Stephanie's a cop by this point, I should add. She's a LAPD just beat cop. And there's a crazy story where Sherry Rasmussen is at work at the hospital where she's a nurse at and Stephanie shows up and she's wearing like a skimpy dress and like a full makeup, which is just absurd at a hospital. Like if you've ever been to a hospital, there's kind of this like sad vibe and no one's trying to look sexy at the hospital is the point I'm making. And so... Sherry Rasmussen is just helping people at the hospital, working her nurse shift. Her feet are probably tired. You know, the nurse, nurses have to work these insane shifts, so I'm sure her feet are tired. And she just wants to go home to hang out with her husband, John. And all of a sudden, this crazy fucking woman, Stephanie, shows up. And she's got these eyes, and it's like, oh, God, Stephanie's here, and she's wearing this skimpy dress and the makeup. And they get into it in the hospital. There's, there's Sherry's friends are witness to this. And her family heard about this and people she works with. So Stephanie just shows up with her crazy face in a dress. Just like telling her like if, you, if your marriage falls apart, 
I'm going to be here to pick up the pieces and kind of just this intimidating. And so poor Sherry's got this great life going. Her life at the hospital is going great. Her, her new marriage is going good other than this just crazy ex-girlfriend of her husband. Um, you know, everything is good. And then in 86, she winds up dead and beaten. And the detectives say, you know, this is the burglary gone bad. There was a burglary across the street. You know, they put two and two together. Well, the only people that thought it was a burglary was the detectives. All of Sherry Rasmussen's family, all of her friends, everyone she worked with, even John, the husband, were telling the detectives, check out this ex-girlfriend. She's got this crazy-ass face and these eyes that just penetrate the devil himself. You got to check out this crazy woman. And But she's a cop. So they're basically saying to detectives, you got to check out a cop for this murder. And this is the first part of this case that it's either... It's either a, a police cover-up where evidence was pointing at Stephanie Lazarus and they said, this is going to be a circus. We're not even going to investigate one of our own for this. And they just knowingly didn't investigate one of their own, which could, would be considered a police cover-up of a murder. Or it could also be more of just negligence where these people are saying, I think it's this crazy ex-girlfriend and she's a cop. And they're saying, no, she's not a cop. The person that killed this woman isn't a cop, all right? And I think that even the phrase they, one of the detectives used when Sherry's dad was like, you got to look at this you got to look at this cop, this ex-girlfriend. They were like, you watch too much TV, okay? It wasn't an LAPD cop, all right? And the case goes cold, as cold as Stephanie Lazarus' eyes, all right? And, and just years go by, you know? 10 years go by, 20 years go by. And Stephanie makes quite a little career out of it for herself. She moves from a beat cop to a detective all the way to the head art detective in the L.A. police force. So any art that is stolen, it's on her. You know, she's the head of that department to get it back and to catch the people, art thieves, which is a very, like, cool L.A. cop to be. It's like, I'm not a... I'm not a beat cop or I'm not a violent crimes cop. I'm an art cop. So of all of the, all of her, uh, like pictures of her doing well in her job and stuff as her like posing next to paintings. She's got these eyes that are just like, <laughs> posing next to paintings and she's wearing like cool, like clothing with flowers on them. She like barely even looks like a cop and, she would take these month-long vacations every year. She traveled the world. She ended up getting married to another cop. Um, she adopted a daughter. She had this whole life for herself, right? And, and she's really into pictures. Well, when we start going into the interrogation, she, she tells them, like, I'm a picture nut. I just take pictures. I've taken 10,000 pictures, and they're all on these DVDs, and I go back and look at them, and... I'm just all into pictures, and it. what's funny is she goes with the, once we get to the interrogation, which is just insane, she, it's the first case that we've talked about where she goes with the strategy of I don't remember. Okay, we haven't seen that yet. Chris, old Chrissy Poo Watts, he couldn't go with I can't remember because it happened the day before. So that would have just been absurd. And then... Old Russy underwear boy, he couldn't do it because he he kind of was like, oh, I don't recall on a few things, but again, it just didn't really make sense. And then the troll vortex, troll hair, Stiven, he just was the yes, 
no, I don't know. And so this is the first time where we see someone actually try to say, I just don't remember to everything. And as we'll see, it just gets ridiculous because you there's some things that you wouldn't remember, but like they bring up the hospital story where she went in all like sexied out to tell her that she was going to steal her husband. They're like, Stephanie, um, you're you you would we would think you would remember going to a hospital and getting into a fight with a nurse and she's like oh gee i don't know i'm gonna have to look at my pictures and she keeps bringing her up her pictures as if like she f took pictures of inside the hospital but it just gets crazy so she's this crazy picture lady and she keeps thinking like oh i'm just gonna have to they're like do you remember dating anybody oh I'm, i don't know i'm gonna have to look at my pictures i'll take a look and it's just, it's just crazy. All right, so 23 years go by, right? And for the first time in decades, the murder rate for Los Angeles just plummets. And for the first time, homicide detectives have more time on their hands. And there's a lot more free time. And so some of these old cold cases that hadn't been worked on in decades are handed out and are given a second look. So these two kind of young homicide detectives get the Sherry Rasmussen case and they start looking at it and you know no one had ever been arrested for the burglaries and that kind of didn't seem to go anywhere and there's this little bit of DNA that, that's been in a test tube for 23 years that was pulled off a bite mark. And they're thinking, a bite mark in a burglary gone bad and there's blood everywhere? It doesn't really add up that a burglary gone bad and there's blood all over the walls and they're shot three times. It just seems... It just seems too aggravated to be a, a burglary gone bad. And so they have this little DNA... And they're thinking, well, DNA has come a long way. It was too small to do anything with at the time. Let's send it off. So they send this DNA off. And lo and behold, it comes back as a female. And just like that, the whole burglary gone bad, too Hispanic looking, you know, suspects all of that just goes out the window and they're like oh man all right and so they're looking at the case they're re these two young homicide detectives they're looking at this and they're reading the case and they see that the family and the friends of sherry rasmussen th kept bringing up this woman who's a cop and that it never really, you know, and so they're all bringing up Stephanie Lazarus' name, and there's a female DNA. So now for the first time, they're thinking, oh my gosh, there could be a murderer with a crazy face as the lead detective of the art department. And just think about that as a, as a homicide detective thinking there's a woman across the hall that very well could have murdered this nurse 23 years ago. She's got a crazy ass face. I'm sure they were saying that to each other. Like, have you seen her eyes? It's like a window to hell looking th at that lady. And so they're, they're thinking, all right, we got to try to match this DNA. And so they follow her. They follow her around with a police tail and finally they get her to go to like a, pol a food court and she gets a burger and she gets a drink and they watch her eat it and then she leaves and they see what trash can they throw she throws it in. So they go and get the drink that she used, get the DNA, send that off and lo and behold, old crazy picture lady comes up a match. And so now... These homicide detectives have 
a DNA match from a cold case murder of an art detective that's across the hall. And they want to talk to her, you know, and you, you're not going to, you can't interrogate somebody that has a gun. <laughs> it's just not a good idea. You know, who knows what they can have. And you start presenting evidence and they just pull out their gun and shoot themselves in the head. Somebody, I've seen the YouTube video, someone did somehow sneak a gun into an interrogation and the, when the officers went out of the room, they just blew their head off. And so they, the detectives have to figure out, okay, how do we get her... How do we get Stephanie away from her gun and able to talk to her about this murder without freaking her out where she won't talk? And what they come up with is a pretty good idea. You have to turn in your gun when you go into a jail. So they, talk, they contacted Stephanie and they say, hey, look, we got a guy in jail that may have information on a case that you're working on. Would you mind coming in and talking to them with us? And Stephanie, old crazy eyes, says, yeah, that sounds good. So she agrees to come to jail. Hi, Lil T. What's up? Lil T is meowing at me. So she agrees to come to the jail, and she turns in her gun, and she comes into this little interrogation room where they have a hidden camera pointed right at the chair she's in, and she sits down. And all of a sudden, 23 years later, I'm sure it's haunted her crazy-eyed nightmares. The thought of one day being interrogated for this murder, and just like this. And they do such a good job of just moving in, once we get into the interrogation, of just moving into kind of what they're there for very slowly. And you get to see Stephanie just deteriorate into total insanity. Um, it's just a, it's a surprise interrogation. She just, I think she thought that she had gotten away with it. It's been 23 years and all of a sudden they're like, do you know John Rutten? Have you ever, did you ever meet his wife? And she's like, oh, gee, I don't know. I don't know. Gosh, it, ugh, it was a million years ago. And they're, and they're like, do you know what happened to her wife? She goes, yeah, I know she got killed. I know she was killed. And it just goes from there. And it is just absolutely fascinating. And some things that have kind of come out way later in this case is it looks like John had still been the, the husband, the husband and the mutual connection between the victim Sherry Rasmussen and the murderer Stephanie Lazarus the connection was John Rutten Stephanie couldn't get over him Sherry was married to him and it looks like that John had been sleeping even after he got engaged was still sleeping with Stephanie I guess we'll never know for sure but I mean we got a love triangle We got a crazy face. I mean, this thing just has it all. And another thing that I just can't get over in this case is how did she become a cop? If you just look at her for five seconds, it's like, this fucking lady is nuts. She makes like 78 facial expressions when instead of just making one. And she, her just eyes are just, she has like those Charles Manson eyes that are just like, I've killed a couple motherfuckers. You know, if you just look into her eyes, it is just not pretty. But all right, so we'll get into the interrogation. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed and participated. I love you so much. I made it to 10,000. It's great. Um, I got a lot of goals for this channel, so I'm just going to keep moving, keep going onward and upward. Uh, onward and upward. Love you all. True Crime Loser out.